New York, are you okay? <laughs> We're wondering, oh my gosh, there's so much going on politically in New York right now. I mean, there was a bill that was trying to be passed to take out the Statue of Liberty. There's been more immigrants that are illegal and undocumented than ever in history in one place in New York City and the surrounding cities. There's been the truck driver ban and boycott. There's been people in government coming against billionaires like Trump from doing business there and proclaiming and they call it lawfare. That's what it's being called. And we're going to talk about this and break this down. But New York, we're praying for you. New York's one of my favorite cities in the world, but I wouldn't go there right now with my children because it's so unsafe. And the culture is so anti what I believe in for conservative traditional American values, that it's not a place that you'd want to visit or bring your family to to support what's currently happening in a very woke political agenda all the way across the board, everything from the 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 gender issues to the the racial issues to the immigration issues to the guns issues to everything that a conservative American would believe in. New York is manifesting the opposite and imploding right now. Well, we saw a story this just in the last week and a half break out with Mayor Eric Adams, who's a self-proclaimed believer. But he has been responding, constantly putting out fires because there's so many things happening right now. And all he's doing is trying to build a negative reputation to a positive reputation and putting out fires from all the different agencies that are going rogue. Well, one of those rogue agencies was trying to make a prominent building that had built, been built 10 years ago to create affordable housing. That's a beautiful building in a part of Harlem that already has too many homeless shelters. And the city was going to make it into a, an immigrant shelter. So an illegal, undocumented immigrant shelter. And we already know that there's been so many deaths. So many of these illegals who came in with criminal activity from Mexico have killed police officers, have wounded people. And so much of it isn't even on the news anymore because they're, they've been given orders on mainstream media not to show these stories. So you have to find them on Twitter. You have to find or X, formerly Twitter. You have to find them in places that share real news because there's so many undocumented aliens that are killing and hurt, harming and hurting our citizens right now. And so you have Eric Adams and Mayor Eric is actually responding to to a group of people in a video we're going to show you and saying, well, it's not going to be that. It's, you know, no, I've I've taken the, anybody who said that they can make this for, you know, undocumented people and for immigrants. It's not going to be that at all. It's going to be a homeless shelter for families. And they're looking at it going, uh... A homeless shelter, we already have three in the same neighborhood that are at maximum occupancy, which means they need more, but it's it's causing the whole neighborhood to have an increase of crime and for the morality to go down. So let's watch this video. Residents over a homeless shelter coming to the neighborhood. CBS 2's Ali Bauman was at a community meeting when the mayor showed up. Harlem residents went looking for answers Thursday night about a once luxury building on Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. The development has sat empty for the past decade until this week when neighbors noticed boxes of bunk beds being loaded in. Can you imagine? You're like, wow, I wonder what's going to happen with that building. And you're excited because this area was being gentrified and then it stopped. And now it's starting to become lower income families and lower income uh, households and also a lot of homeless. And so people are we're nervous to we're part of the gentrification. They're looking at it going, we're bringing it up. People have invested billions of dollars in this neighborhood. And then all of a sudden this happens and no one's communicating to the whole neighborhood. This is being ordered by government officials who do not live there. They do not have feet on the ground there. We were trying to find out what was going on and we weren't getting any answers to our question. They learned City Hall was planning to turn the building into temporary housing for asylum seekers. I will say this too, it was not asylum seekers. It was undocumented people who have not even started the asylum process. So there's so many buildings. I don't know if you heard about the schools that they were apprehended. So kids had to be sent home in New York because there were schools that were being used as immigrant shelters, as emergency shelters for two or three days and some up to two weeks. And so kids had to do remote learning because of this. So the school systems, our citizens in America, were were displaced from their programs and from the things that actually make Americans Americans so that people who weren't even documented and were not in an official asylum seeking process, they're not registered with the government, they're not going through an official process, they've just come across the border. So this narrative of even how news agencies say this is twisted. No, I don't agree with it. It turned into a sanctuary for asylum seekers. No, when we have people right here that need the space. Right, come on. While neighbors were gathering to share their concerns, Mayor Eric Adams dropped in to answer questions. 
You are the mayor. We do not want to hear excuses. But the mayor announced a change of course. I told the team, find out what's going on here. We're not moving folks into a brand new building when you have long-term needs into a community. That's not going to happen. So this, this makes him look like a hero. He's putting out a fire. But the reality is, is that the citizens there are still saying, like, why aren't we voting on this? Why isn't there not being a vote when we already have so much of a homeless epidemic and problem and we have shelters that aren't working enough? Why aren't we looking for new solutions? And this is actually causing the quality of life for all of us to go down. There's people who can't afford their rent. They're being they're being priced out of this neighborhood. Why can't they this be a, a house for lower income families? The luxury building will instead be a shelter for long term New York City families. You will not have migrants and asylum seekers in that property. Residents told me they're relieved for the change, but frustrated by the city's lack of transparency around opening a shelter in the first place. Many wish they had more input about the building's future. We have too many homeless shelters in this community. Regina Smith says she'd like to see it become affordable housing. There you go. Percent of households in this neighborhood are rent burdened, meaning over a third of their income goes towards rent. We have a dearth of affordable housing. We're being priced out of the community. So there you have it right there. They're being priced out of the community. We have this issue going on in New York. And this is just one of the communities of New York. You have Queens. You have New York City proper, Manhattan. You have all these places, New Jersey, that are having the same kinds of problems. And they're exhausted. And the mayors of these different areas are not helping. They're, they're, they're just putting out fires. They're not adding solutions, which is so it's just so sad. And then on top of that, you have this Trump uh, victory against Trump for over $350 million for this issue. And I love that Kevin O'Leary, who's not a Trump supporter, got on with major news and said, hey, I'm pulling out of New York, too. And so are other people. I've heard that up to upwards of 30 billionaires are not going to be doing business in New York anymore because of what just happened against Trump, because it was a, a victimless crime, so to speak. It was a uh, somebody was called a crime that wasn't a crime. And Kevin O'Leary explains this really well in this news clip I'm going to show you. Wouldn't there be many companies who would not want to do business or loan money to people like yourself or investors if they know that they can get away with fraud and there's no recourse to protect them? Excuse me, what fraud? I don't, I, this is not about Trump anymore. When you get a developer, when you get a developer that builds a building and he says it's worth $400 million and he wants to borrow $200 million from a bank, which happens every day, everywhere on earth, including every American city, Every developer is an entrepreneur. They shine the light on their building and they say it's worth 400. The bank does its own due diligence, as was done in this case. I mean, this is capitalism. This is normal capitalism, what he's saying. And there's people who are socialistic who don't think it's fair that people who are successful can get evaluations from banks because it's not just the building itself. It's their whole portfolio. B banks want to do business with successful people. And Kevin O'Leary is totally calling this out. Because they're very good at it. The banks are very good. And they say, no, it's worth 300. We're only going to loan you 150 million. That haggling has gone on for decades. That's how it works. And then... In this case, even, the bank that was supposedly defrauded testified and said, we didn't lose anything. We want to do business with this guy again. We'd like to. But the judge said, no, 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 no. Let's penalize this developer for $355 million. And if we're going to do that, let's penalize all the developers all across America. They've all done the same thing. All of them should go to jail and we should stop building buildings. That's what the message is from New York. Even the governor herself is concerned about what this looks like to investors all around the world. It's not just U.S. domestic. Now, I want to I want to just point this out that this woman who's in CNN is not a business owner. She's a lawyer and she's a, a commentator or, or a news journalist and not a very good one. And we know that if you watch her history, she's she's very, very, very extremely left. And Kevin O'Leary is just saying, like, listen, people don't want to do business in New York anymore. It's scary. It's like they're being penalized. There's no victim to this crime that's being called a crime. And bankers are good at their jobs. And these business leaders are good at their jobs. And I'm good at my job. And I want to be able to go in and actually create wealth. And this this state is no longer allowing that. And she look at her judgment on her face as we go. She just doesn't agree with anything you're saying. All well, around the world, people are talking about what happened here. You really think people want to invest money in New York after this? How about we go well, somewhere I, I else? Think, how, I think there are to, people who would, I don't want to cut you off, but I, I want to converse well, with you, you instead. You just did. I, 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 I want to have a conversation, <laughs> you know what? Kevin, I respect as opposed you to just you know, having I respect you tell you me. Because you're a lawyer. 
You're a lawyer. You understand well, exactly what I'm talking about. She wouldn't understand what he's talking about because she's not a businesswoman lawyer. And she's a lawyer probably. I, I don't remember what her field was. I remember looking it up at one point for another story. But she's, she doesn't understand. And there's a lot of people who don't understand who are politicians, career politicians, who don't understand business. And that's one thing that Kevin says later is he says, you know, people are going to bring their money to cities who have governors who've actually been in business before or mayors who actually understand business because that's where you're going to get not penalized, but you're going to get incentivized to be a part of a city that wants forward movement in their city and they want entrepreneurs and her argument is it's not fair for everybody it's not fair capitalism is not fair for everybody meaning if you know how to make money and you make money and you're good at it other people don't know how to make money or they don't want a job that makes money or they don't want to go to college or they don't even try and get trade skills they don't try and do anything but we live in a country where there's more self-made millionaires and billionaires than ever in anywhere else in history we have an opportunities here of any race for people to get out ahead if they will just apply themselves. And there's a narrative on the left that says it only works for rich white people, and it's just not true. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm respectable for a number of reasons, Kevin O'Leary, but being a, law, a lawyer is one of those issues. But I'll tell you, when I, when I hear your conversation, and I do wanna converse with you about this point, I understand that there are legitimate concerns that were raised during the trial and will continue to be raised about who the quote unquote, what, who is actually bringing the suit? It wasn't the banks who were saying that we as consumers are unsophisticated feel this way, but Letitia James, the attorney general, and I know you want to expand beyond Trump, has suggested, well, it's about making the playing field level for those who are not the major and billionaire investors, but for those who are supposed to put business records out there, want to get a loan, the idea of making sure that they have to have the same true statements included as those who have a lot more money. Is there any weight to that for you? I ask you who lost money, and I'll make it even clearer. You and I, we're developing a data center together, and I say to you, this is so we can go to New York where this just happened. It's your money now. You're now an investor, and you're taking risk. You're an entrepreneur with me, right beside me. We're together on the deal. Or I can show you Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia, where the governors actually ran businesses. Same. Let's go there, where this never happened before. They have power, they have permits, they've got legislation that's supportive of entrepreneurship. Why would we go to New York? Why take the risk? My only point is, did we just diminish the great state of New York and the great people of New York? And shouldn't they ask for better management so they don't become a flyover state? Remember, New York has the highest taxes in the country, the worst regulatory environment, and it's incredibly mismanaged. And I'm pointing out now on top of that, you get this insanity. So Kevin is absolutely right. And we're watching businesses who in California, in New York, in Chicago, in Minnesota, Minneapolis, businesses are moving. I mean, people are moving away because it's just not functional to do business in a, in a state like in, or in a city even in some of these places where the tax rates and the, the penalization, I mean, like where it's an employee state, not an employer state, which there needs to be rights for employees. And I, I totally agree with that. But you can't penalize and treat employers if you want healthy business that actually funds your economy. You can't treat them the way that New York is absolutely treating them. Well, on top of this, we've had a truck driver boycott that you might not have heard about, but this is really interesting. Now, again, this is truck drivers who are for Trump who feel like he was mistreated in the state of New York, and they're looking at possibly up to 15% uh, of trucks will not go to go there right now, and, and uh, at least 15% of what's needed will not go there right now. It's going to drive up the prices. They're doing at least a seven-day boycott. They're still in the middle of it uh, as we speak, and so let's see what, what they're saying right here. It could shut New York City down. Um... And, you know, I don't want to hurt the people of New York. That's not what I'm trying to do. But my part in it, if, if New York just loses 10%, just 10% of the trucks that go in there, their prices are going to skyrocket on everything from milk to eggs to any type of goods that the consumer needs. And when that happens, it's going to cost everybody more money. The trucker backlash against the lawfare in New York City is growing by the hour, and we're going to see the latest on how patriots are effectively disrupting the city's supply chain. Also, we're just sick of it, you know, and we're not going to we're not going to take it anymore. I see a civil war coming. 
Yesterday, I reported on a trucker by the name of Chicago Ray. He's got a huge following on X, formerly known as Twitter. And he was the first one to announce that truckers across the nation were going to officially boycott delivering goods to New York City over the course of the next seven days in response to the New York court's weaponizing of the law against President Trump. Since then, we've been getting a number of confirmations that a national boycott is indeed underway. Here's the latest. Yeah, so they're actually... They're, this has already passed and they're actually doing more bo boycotting than they were before. And I just think it's really interesting that this is the first time, I, maybe there's been a lot of boycotts like this. I've never heard of a boycott against the city from truck drivers to to defend a political candidate. I've just never heard of that. And I just thought it was, it was something to bring up because we're in a season of time that there is a complicated version of a civil war happening where there is a left versus right. There's a one version of culture against another version of culture in America. And there's there's a battle and there's a battle in media. There's a battle in politics. There's a battle in, uh, in just all that are in school systems, a battle in the way we do business. And people are playing dirty, especially you're watching Biden criminalize and use his DOJ department uh, just to absolutely come after Trump in unethical ways by his own family. I mean, he's he's now responsible for the same classified issues as Trump. But Trump's they're trying to penalize Trump, but they're writing him off as an old man who still wants to run for president again. And there's no there's no implications. His son, Hunter Biden, has been proven that he had a gun illegally, that he's had drugs illegally, that he's taken bribes, all these things. It's proven he's been in congressional hearings where they've actually like they've they've asked him questions and he's admitted to many of these things. And so you have I mean, there's trials going on as well. And so you, you don't have you know, what's good for one doesn't happen to the other. It's just you don't have an even playing field. And so we're living in a day where there's a lot of corruption. And New York is a reflection of that. New York is a city where every Democrat-run city is doing terribly right now. If you can prove that they're not, please do in the comments. Good luck. But every one of the cities has issues with homelessness, issues with immigration, issues in their budgets, issues with corruption over their, their highway systems, issues with um, just business bribes and, and, and just crazy stuff, like almost third world nation stuff. And we want to see a difference. We want to see a change. And so I think it's really important that we look at stories like this and tell me what you're doing about New York. Maybe you have plans to go there this winter or even this summer. What are you doing? And is New York still on your radar? And if you live in New York, how are you feeling as a Christian, a believer, as a conservative, as somebody in the middle? How do you feel about what's happening to you right now? How can we be praying for you, New York? Because you're not OK. And again, let's keep that Statue of Liberty right there because it's a picture of our early forefathers it was a gift from france showing that we are a melting pot community of the world and that the best people in the world live here of all races and we want to keep that going and that statue of liberty is so important so i want to encourage you leave a comment down below i want to hear from you and if you haven't watched the sean bull show on a monday yet or if you haven't listened to it on podcast please subscribe and go on the journey with us because you're going to love it and i'll see you in the next video